We're going to continue on with uh, Shout Metrics and show how a pie chart would work. And again, this is the pie chart and how it's going to animate. All right, so let's go back to Shout Metrics first of all. And uh, I have a different poll started here. And this is a, a manual poll just so that we can uh, show that you know, show it moving by adding a bunch of um, numbers in here. So like before I did this, I said, okay, I want a title. Do you think this is a great summer? Bar one is yes, bar two is no, and bar three is undecided. And so I said yes, no, and undecided here. And um, yes, no, and undecided here. Now this could be um, going into a, a pie chart as well. So I really don't have to worry about the range anymore. Um, so this, this range is actually the same as before with, with uh, the bar charts. But just by saying include the pie chart data in there, again, it, the, the Shout Metrics does the math for you. The other thing that I've done in here, and I said that I was going to show you how to do this, instead of um, getting a whole bunch of uh, different XML sections, I'm, I'm going to say flatten the results, just to show you what that does. Okay, so let's go back here. Uh, basically what I did, and I'm, you know, this is using the cylinder. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the default. I'm going to go to uh, the cylinder and we'll turn it around like this. I'm just going to bring it up in the, in the depth position. And again, go to the 3D primitives, give it some really nice roundness, put a little bit of a bevel on it, change the height of it and so forth. Okay, and the other thing that I'm going to do and is this relates to the start angle of this and the angle size. So you can see that the angle size, when I move it around like this, the start angle, all that does is where do you want this to start opening? So I usually leave the start angle at zero and open this up. Okay, so what we have to do in here, and I, I probably should have done it in the animate path. So let me just go over here and I'll show you what I've done with this one. Okay. So we'll get rid of that, that other cylinder. But if you look at this in the animate in, you want to have uh, a start angle and the angle size. So what we do with this is the start angle really uh, makes a difference in here because what we do is we're starting here so that's like basically start angle one and the green one would go over to there and that is technically start angle for the red one so basically what I want to do is I want to put a start angle one and a start angle two and an angle size so we need both of those so basically what I want to do is I don't need anything on the angle size at the first one, just at the second one. So again, right click and you can see I've already done that in here. I said cylinder one angle size. And again, I've named this so that it makes sense. Then on the start angle, right click on the second one, modify, and you'll see that I had it updatable and it says cylinder one start angle two. And this one over here, start angle one. So I've done that for all three cylinders. Okay, we can get rid of that. This one back here, we don't need this one. All right, so we've done that. And this one I'm going to make a little bit easier. I don't, I'm just going to uh, have it come onto the screen, bring those three chips along the bottom and tell it to animate the pie. Now I can tell it to loop the data, um, but this is not going to inherit the state. It the data will get updated and the bar and the pie chart will just move, which is just a, a you know a very quick way of getting it on the air. All right, so let's uh, call this up again. We'll go to the data object and let's see what we've done in the data object here. It's really basically, you can do it right at the beginning here. Okay, so if I right click and open up the properties, first of all, you said you, I, I said flatten it. so technically you see them all in here so it's all in one or you can go and say 
edit and say, well, no, no, I just want to see, I want to see just some of them, right? So I want to maybe see the name, see the title, right? So you can basically go in here and just say which ones you want to see. It's going to go back here to the data object properties, all right? And uh, again, the custom and poll. So this is the title. Right, so I just went down to where it says title, brought that in place. Bar one, title, bar two, title, bar three, title. Okay, and this one is um, bar one percent going to the yes, so bar one percent. And let me I'll just close this for a sec so we can actually see it. There we go bar 1%, and that's bar 2%, no, no percent, and the undecided. And this is the other thing that we want to do. So we have the, uh, this is the angle size. So remember cylinder one angle size, that's how far you want that cylinder to open up, so that's cylinder one. Okay, so really we, we don't need anything other than that because we know that cylinder one starts there and then so we only really need to go around to the first one to the size. But then the red one is going to, the start angle is going to be over here now. So that's why we need to go and again pick up, right? So you see start angle two size. I'll just move these over so... So you see where it says angle one. And this is going to angle one. So basically, um, we don't want either the start or the end to uh, to be um, different. So I'm going to take this one, drag it to there, and this one to drag it to there. So you can see that both cylinder two, start angle one and two, are there. And then on this one here, this is a cylinder two angle size. So again, it starts here. So the red one might start here. We know that it goes to the angle size. We don't want the second keyframe of the angle start to move. So that's why we assigned both the starting and the end. So the two angle keyframes to that. Then that's the size and then the same thing here we did cylinder three start angle one and two because then we want the the third angle to start maybe here and then the size to, to fill in so when you take the three of them together uh, they should equal 100 percent and so that data object was put in there so the data object gets updated so again we'll look at the events so I did the same thing as I did with the bar graphs on keyframe at, at the one frame mark. We put a refresh, then we put an update, and then we put a display. So it figures out right there what the, the, the pie chart is. Then I did an animation that basically just dissolves these tri three chips up along the bottom. And then right here, we have an event to go to animate pie. And the animate pi basically does this. Okay, so cylinder one, two, and three. And this is the cylinder group. So basically I did an animation. Remember the start and end keyframe of that. And these are the, the, the two keyframes that get updated by the data object. I just brought the pi in like the whole group. So I can do an animation on the group. So it sort of ends up like that. And the other thing that we did is we colored them and we put a texture map on them. All right, so that's basically the finished product of that. And I'm just going to play this to the output. Okay, so it got updated. Now if I go to my manual poll here, and let's put in, you know, 200 here. And you can see that it automatically updates. but it just snaps into place, okay? So again, another great way of displaying some data on the air, and in this case, using a pie chart.
an animating pie chart that will update when the, the numbers get updated.